Hi guys, it's Luton here, and um, today I've got another concept art design for you. Now, this one is actually going from the beginning right here, so the initial sketch. I was literally just sort of doodling around trying to make some kind of character, and then I thought I would take this whole one through. I started sketching out, you see I made a little bit of a beginning, and I thought, hey, this is actually maybe something I can record today, so that's what I did. Um, this one went right through to completion, full colour artwork, and it's not very often that I work that way because most of the time I kind of start something, stop, come back to it, come back to it. I don't tend to do an entire image in one go. Um, so this was kind of unusual. It was kind of good to actually do it this way. Maybe I'll do a few more like this um, once you really get into it. The total time for this uh, draw was about two hours. So it was maybe like an hour sketch, um, maybe a little bit more than an hour sketch and then coloring up about uh, 45 minutes, maybe something like that. So the idea of this guy, he was just a bit of kind of a, a space trooper, something like that, futuristic soldier, that's really what I was thinking of. And I didn't really have any idea of environment to begin with, although I did have the idea that he might be some kind of, in a, in a kind of cold environment, that's why he has this either kind of heating unit around his armour, around the chest here, perhaps to sort of insulate or provide some kind of internal circulation. Um, his gun is also powered by that backpack which he's wearing, so it might be some kind of uh, superheated uh, equipment there, or liquid fueled system, whatever. Um, you'll notice as well that the weapon doesn't have any optics and his helmet does not have any kind of visor. The idea that it's within a kind of blizzard environment, um, his external sensors of the suit are going to provide the actual vision and his internal vision will actually provide the optics. So he doesn't need to, an optic to aim down because his visor, his internal helmet provides all of that. So when I'm sketching like this, I'm literally just kind of doing it on the fly. I'm just sort of letting my imagination flow as I go along. No reference images used for this at all. This was literally just straight out of my head. Um, but I will say that a lot of illustrators uh, do use reference, including myself, because reference is a very good tool. You may take several images, find pieces that you like from those images to combine them into an image, or you may find sort of buildings, etc., that you like, trying to break those down. And I know that in uh, concept art design, often people use real photographs. Nothing wrong with that because you're creating an image. The idea is that you're sort of providing a vision. It's, it's just to kind of get people to sort of understand what you want them to see. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of flattening out the actual area. This will allow me to go on to the next stage where I bring in some texture. So just placing that and cleaning it up. I've laid in here, it's a kind of colour of a droid in the background, um, this is quite a well known technique, a lot of people do this technique and what you're doing is you just lay in this image, it can be anything, it doesn't have to be an illustration, it could be a piece of metal, it could be a piece of wood, any texture and then what you're going to do is pick up those colours to lay them down flat and you'll see that that image disappears quite quickly when I start laying my colour down. So the idea is not to create an image you know, in the background and layer on, what you're doing is using it more of a colour palette, okay, so you're, you're blocking it in there. The other thing is that when you place an image like this, it has a lot of differentiations in tone straight away, uh, rather than having sort of flat block areas of colour, and it's great for you to kind of pick up from and work from, it's, it's a really good tool to use that sort of system. Um, obviously you can do that when you're working on a digital format, but when you're working with traditional media, obviously you don't have that ability, however when you're working with traditional media, I often find that the paint itself, the ink or whatever, will provide those textures for you to build on, build on, build on, but it is a bit more work, it's a bit harder, and that tends to be why a lot of concept artists don't work in traditional media anymore because of the time involved. Um, there may also be drying times, etc. So this guy, he has a bit of a cloak around him as well to sort of protect him. There could be all sorts of reasons for that, but other than that, it just kind of looks cool. Um, I've got a couple of layers that I'm working on. Basically, I have the main sketch, which I worked with, the main layer. Then I got my texture layer in the background and a couple of other little things there. I often work on maybe a couple of two highlight layers, something like that, just to sit on top so that if you want to adjust those or repaint them, it doesn't require too much altercation. I wanted to stick with quite a simple colour palette here because he's going to be quite bleached out from the environment anyway, there's going to be a lot of reflection of light from all the snow around him and stuff, but I did want to keep some shadow there because I felt like the light source would be kind of far behind in the distance, so the, the shadow is being cast mainly onto his back, so the front facing section there is still going to be quite dark because it's fairly enclosed, quite tight to his chest. But you'll see as well when we bring in the snow, here we are, so I'm building up that kind of light on the left hand side of his body, also coming back over the top of the crown of the helmet and the colour pieces on the top of the chest already. Uh, I needed to put in the snow here for the kind of blizzard environment that I wanted to create here. So I'm just putting some blobs down, copying those up, making a couple of them smaller, erasing some back, fading them out, putting a motion blur on just softly, and then kind of inter 
lacing those things there together. And you can see again, just messing around with the levels a little bit here to create that kind of bleached out feel, knocking some of that line back a little bit, raising it. And then we're gonna move into sort of the background editing a little bit now, kind of feel relatively happy with how I've got him to. It's more of a color sketch this, it's not a fully, fully finished artwork. To do that, I'd need to spend many more hours just refining, refining, refining. This is kind of loose concept art. And I wanted to put in some kind of washed out sort of landscape in the background. There's just a few mountains, a couple of streaks coming across there for the wind and this stuff. There we go, that's all there is to it. Right down to the end. I hope you've enjoyed this little one. It's quite a short video. I will have some more coming up. I've been really enjoying doing these and it's been getting me back into art. I am a professional illustrator, but I do focus mainly on design work now, but it's still something I enjoy doing and I do do it freelance. I'm kind of really loving the illustration. It's really driving me to get back into it. So maybe many more on the way for me. Maybe not all kind of concept art. Either I might show you some other pieces of work that I've done, maybe some more traditional stuff. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Drop your comments below. Like it if you enjoyed it. See you next time.